Some of you guys were asking what he's using to cut all these knife plates with. They're coming out really clean. He's using a seven and a quarter, a 10 and a quarter, a 16 and 5 16 all skill saw. He's been using the Ego chainsaw, the cordless that I've got, along with the chainsaw that he's got as well. So we just shot with the Hilti laser from the back side of building here out to the first post and then to the last post in that run. And then we got the first post down here as well. Make sure that you shoot it off that same elevation though so you want to shoot it from one spot turn it shoot it to the last post mark it there as well from there all we have to do is pull up to our number figure out where we need to be string line end to end and that's where all we need to cut let's check oh it's pretty cherry i guess pretty dang good we're right over there, and there. Is, uh... safe to say that concrete is pretty dang good out here our first mark was shot from over here second mark from back over here within an eighth inch. Right there, bulls. Beautiful. Cool. little piggies and lean them in the windows and label them one, <laughs> two, three. Yeah, we'll, we'll start labeling them at uh, one. That'll work. If we put it, you put it at the very bottom of the post, I don't think anybody's going to see it down here. So I'm writing two on this guy. There's two. One. Yeah, buddy. This one's all covered up. Can't get to it. Got to take up some seating or something. I'm writing on it. No worries. Very lightly. I will uh I will get myself set up in here. That's gonna work. Daddy told me, just because your head comes to a point, boy, that don't mean you're sharp. Oh drag it, drag it. You guys drink your pre-workout. There we go. This is what we're working with here, these fancy little washers. $3.50 per washer. So that's $7 in washers just on this one. We have three per post to beam connection. It adds up quick.
Oh, I'm sorry. My bad.
You can see that we've got everything braced off of here. One going up that way, one going up this way that's going to lock everything together. Not allowing it to open or close. Once we get our rafters up there, we'll test fit, throw them in, see what needs to happen. If we need to adjust it all, we can. We kind of bounced around. We got our ridge beam set. We got our beam set for our rafters to land on at the bottom there. We got all of our posts in the back elevation marked, taken down, cut, knife plated, and put back up in place and finalized. That's all complete now as well. At this point, we are ready to drop all of our beams in there, which is what Greg worked on the better half of the afternoon. Me and these guys hopped up here and threw down a couple sheets, wrapped up the living room here and finished out a good section over there behind the garage. Tomorrow morning, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna hop back to the back side of the house and just start slinging sheets down, getting all that wrapped up. The sheathing that we're working with here is four by eight by five eighths. With that being said, a lot of you guys have asked me why we don't use H clips. For those of you that don't know, H clips are literally a little H and they go in the sheathing and then the next sheet slides in. Similar to how a tongue and groove holds, that's how an H clip works. They go in between the trusses or the rafters. So you have a truss here, you have a truss here, you'll have an H-clip in the center to help support that span. The reason we don't have to use them is because we're using 5-8 sheathing. When you use half-inch sheathing, you have to use H-clips as well. So by us using 5 8 which is a little bit thicker, an eighth, we can bypass using H-clips. So that's what we've done out here. Not to mention we've been doing 5 8 roof sheathing for years now. 
bypass. Those age clips make things a little bit easier. To end out today's video, I wanted to share with you guys a little tip for when you install zip system sheathing. Something that I accidentally screwed up on when we were first laying sheets. Um, I didn't even realize it was happening. The way I do sheathing, I'll drop the sheet in, nail one side, nail the other side, and then tack all the way around the thing. What I wasn't realizing is that the little tongue, the little nub on the edge of the sheathing to give you proper spacing was being held up on top of the other sheets, therefore creating a little hump in my sheathing, which is not good. It's not gonna show, but I don't like it. Flush here. It's held up right there. It'll only happen in the middle of your sheet, so you just have to watch when you put these things down. You almost have to nail the far side, nail the middle, and then nail the other side, which typically we don't do. If all goes well in the future, every build that we do is gonna have zip system on the walls and the roof. Um, it's just a much better product to work with. You feel like you're working with something that is high quality instead of OSB. Tomorrow, we're gonna work on getting this sheeted out back here, wrap that up. We got this monstrous beam set up way out here. Looks awesome. And you can see all of our knife plates down here as well all the way down the back side of the home. Our beams are ready to drop in. And then from there, all we have to do is cut the one and 12 rafters, similar to what we did on the back side of the living room over there. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please, big thumbs up down below. Let's break 2000 likes on this video. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bang on.